The nation of Tanzania is very rich. Excuse me. The nation of Tanzania. Tanzania what? Tanzania is very rich in African history. But most importantly, when the first Europeans arrived. Oh, Germany! Oh, Germany! What are you talking about? We're Tanzania here, not Germany. Well, back in the 1800s, Germany took control of our land. Oh, now I remember. They wanted to imperialize this area because this was a major center for long-distance trade. Ivory! Get your ivory! Slaves! Get your slaves! I think I'll take you up on that offer. Here, have some cloth, glassware, and ceramics. Oh, so that's how it happened. Yeah, on the mainland, but we can't forget about the island of Zanzibar. Slaves, slaves, slaves. It seems like all we did were trade slaves. Oh, look! There they go again. Come on, people. We don't have all century here. We have to ship you all off so that conflict among African communities can come about. See, people do love you. Well, they say they do, and then fight because not everyone is treated equally. But it's all the same. No way, no way. This reminds me of that time in history class when I heard that Zanzibar was part of an ancient trading route. I remember hearing that. They helped link traders from Central and East Africa with even more traders from Arabia, the Red Sea, and the Indian Ocean areas. Hmm, maybe that's why in the 1800s, Zanzibar was the East African center for trading. Ivory and slaves. What a small interconnected world they live in. Yes, all the time they spent thinking about their happy and not so happy times did not last for too long, as they were forced to work on German plantations under harsh conditions. These conditions are so horrible, those darn imperialistic nations that have no regard to the needs and wants of the natives. I think we should start a rebellion. I think that I want some fish. How about some good old mahi-mahi? Compromise time! We can have a rebellion and call out a fish name. I like the sounds of that! The Mahi-Mahi Rebellion of 1905. On second thought, due to animal cruelty laws, how would we call it the Maji-Maji Rebellion? Good plan. Plus history will like the sounds of that better. Now here, fishy, fishy, fishy! <laughs> the rebellion was forcefully put down by the German forces. Oh. oh. Where they killed many thousands of Africans and dampened the African spirit. But soon they got their independence. Here in the UK, we decided to make... Zanzibar and Pemba Islands, British protectorates. The UK also took over the Sultan's roles in local affairs. Then, that little world event known as World War I took place and Germany's control of this area was revoked. The mainland Tanganyika was given over to Britain as a protectorate. So that's why many people moved into the mainland from the British Empire, like many Indians who immigrated to work as merchants and traders. This is reminiscent of nowadays, where Tanzania has more than a half a million refugees. Wow, that's a lot of people. Actually, it's the highest amount of refugees in any African nation. That's too bad all those people mostly came from Brundi and the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Hopefully it is better here. Again, what a small interconnected world all this is. It all started many years ago in 1945. Britain appointed the first two Africans to the legal council of the nation. Then, in 1948, the Tanganyika became a UN trust territory, which means that Tanganyika was a successor of the League of Nations, and because they were a mandate of the League, the UN took over looking after them. Yes, and the UK started preparing Tanganyika for independence. We love you, Conrad. Oh, yes, we do. We love you, Conrad. And we'll be true. When you're not near us, we're blue. Oh, Conrad, we love you. Oh, guys, I don't think we're supposed to be talking about Conrad, but Julius Nero here, he was loved by all, but sadly he didn't have his own musical. First, how about I tell you who this Nere guy is and what all he did to become such an admired man? In 1953, Nere became the leader of the Tanganyikan African Association. And by 1953, he had formed the TANU, right? What 
The HES is the T-A-N-U. The Tanganyikan African National Union. Huh. With the slogan, Free Freedom and Unity. Then, in 1958, the first general election took place. Here, the T-A-N-U took three out of the twelve, or a quarter of the seats of the cabinet. This showed they're growing in sport. Go T-A-N-U! Hey! Let's go fight for independence! No way, man! We had a peaceful voyage towards independence! Oh, yeah! I remember because it was all set up for us to become independent and all we had to do was go along for the ride. Thank you to the UK. And then, in 1960, the TANU triumphed. That's why on December 9, 1961, Tanganyika became independent? Yes, Nero became the first president and he is remembered for all of his major actions from 1964 to 1985. During this time, he kept Tanzania safe from civil wars. He implemented socialism. But he did not have any economic success. Although, he never gave up on his people like us, and kept telling us that we should work hard and be self-reliant. Well, the TANU won the first round of the elections. Cool! That's why they were able to form the first Tanganyikan government. So, when was that exactly? Well, if you must know, it was in December of 1961, my good friend. But what about Zanzibar? A great question. They came into play very shortly here. Both Zanzibar and Tanganyika joined together to form the Republic of Tanzania. Wait, I've always heard it called Tanzania. Yeah, me too. That's because it sounds better and it's shorter to say. You know that people are pretty much lazy. Those darn lazy humans. Yay, Democrats! Yay, Republicans! Yay, single party country! What do you want, what? The only political party that was allowed in Tanzania was the TANU. That way, Neri's party could not be beat, and they would not have to worry about all that time and money spent on primaries. Not like a woman and a black man that I know of. Shh! You can't prove that! Come on, guys. Nere respected others, and world leaders respected him because of his great doctrine of word, hard, hard work, work, and determination. Well, that Tanzania adopted a socialist economic system. Yeah, they were trying to counter their poor economic system. But that didn't work out too well, now did it? Hey, they tried. Hey, the government just took my business. Well, they could have used the police force to relocate you along with five million other people to live and work in the Umaja villages. But in those villages, they tried to offer improved health care systems and educational systems. They are not helping me, and I farm for them while living in this poor location. Who is me? I am the brutal ruler of Uganda, and I am sending troops into your country of Tanzania. Fine. We will wage a $500 million war on you and your dictator regime. Although that boosted morale in Tanzania, that was not the smartest move on the part of the government because of the high price of imported oil. Oh, we win. Oh my goodness, you've overthrown me. Oh my goodness, I can't pay my trade debts. It's the 1980s and I think we're going to have an economic collapse. Ha! You did have an economic collapse. Now we must change our socialist system. Yes, yes you must. 1999. What's going on? Is this another 1998 episode where Osama bin Laden placed bombs in our U.S. embassies? No. Nearly died, man. And now, the TANU is under the leadership of Ali Hassan Mawal. <laughs> Hopefully he'll be able to bring us out of this grief. And into the future and beyond. Well, I hear that he will work for less state control of the economy. We'll see about that, man. So what's next? Well, that's kind of it. The rest is up to you. Well, where'd you go? I'm here. Uh, could you look that way really quick? Okay, okay.